before we go too much further, is a notion of the single, the multiple, and the many. This is specifically related to the way in which data is constructed in Grasshopper. Let's create another point in Rhino. With this point created in Rhino, let's go ahead and move that point in the Y direction some amount. I'll select my point and type in move. And I'll just move it in the Y direction. Now when I do that, you'll notice that the point obviously moves from where it was to a new location. But if we look at how this works in Grasshopper, I'll create a new file, go File, New. I'll make another point in Rhino. Let's bring that point into Grasshopper using a point container, right-clicking and setting one point, and use the command move. Let's go to transform, Euclidean move. Now you can see that the move translates an object along a vector, and the move input asks for base geometry and a vector. We'd like to move our point, so let's connect it to G. And we would like to move it in a particular direction, which is T. From the vector menu, we can just go right over here to the far right vector and grab a unit Y. If you notice, there are by default a unit Y, Z, as well as X for you to use. I'm going to grab the unit Y. So I would like to take this vector and move my point. Changing the F input with maybe our good friend the slider. I'm just making that 1 to 12. You can see that we can now control how far this point moves. But one big difference you might notice is that here in Rhino, the point, when it's, when it's translated, is literally translated. It's moved from here to here. But in Grasshopper, when you move, the original point remains, and a new point is created. The reason for this is that Grasshopper needs to know where the point originally was. If I'm going to define the geometry to move, I can't also then move the geometry that is being defined as the input. That would look something like this if it were a wire. This is called feedback. And it's not able to be done in Grasshopper without adding onto Grasshopper or writing a scripted component. So in Grasshopper, you create a parent object, and then through some sort of action, it results in new objects or instances. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to create a line from those two points, the moved point and the original point. We all know now that a line is found in curve, primitive, so let's grab the line between two points. If we take our point into A and our move point into B, you'll see we now have a point, or rather a line. Changing this slider will update the line. Let's say we want to create another line over to the side. Perhaps what we could do is just move our new line in X. 
repeating the same process that we just did, let's take a moment to move our line in the x direction in the same way that we did here in the y. What I like to do is select a couple of objects, like the move and the slider, and just copy and paste them. Remember, you can always replace the input of an object, sorry, uh, the input of an object from line into here. But instead of moving it in Y, let's move it in X. So we'll just go right back to our vector menu, vector, and move in unit X. We take the output of X into T and replace the input for F. We'll see we can now offset as well as change the length. I'm going to change the name of the slider to length and offset. Now as I'm modeling, you'll notice that I start to align different things in my viewport. The align tool is really great and you can get to it by going to Display, Canvas Widgets, and turning on Align. If you select multiple objects, you can use the Align tool by clicking right, left, vertical center, or horizontal center, or left alignment. Let's say we would like to create not just one new object, but many new objects. What would that look like? Well, if we look under the curve menu, you'll see that there is a division submenu. And in, that in this dropdown, there is an object called divide curve. The divide curve object has three inputs on the left. The top input is the curve to divide. The middle input asks for how many segments you'd like to divide. This represents the curve on our left. So we're going to take that curve and bring it right into C. In doing so, you'll see in Rhino that we now have a collection of points. If I copy and paste this down, you can connect the output of the move line into C, and you'll see you now have another collection of points. Now, as the model is becoming a little bit more sophisticated, you'll notice that it might not be that easy to be able to know which object to connect. Now, one thing that we like to do is get rid of all these nicknames. They can be helpful at first, but you'll soon find that as you start to model more and more, you'll run into names or nicknames that are similar across multiple objects, regardless of what they're doing. So the divide object in math has the same name as the divide curve object in curve, and that can be sort of problematic. So let's go to display and turn on this nice option at the top called Draw Icons. What this will do, we'll now draw an icon on the object, which is consistent with what it looks like in the menu. Since this is a visual programming environment, the more visual things are, I think, the better. The second thing we're going to do is look at how we can add a new label to this object that has meaning to us. So in this case, this line will be called line left or left line or line A, and this one will be line B. Selecting this line, you can go to Edit, Group. I'll repeat that for this object, Edit, Group. And zooming in, if you remember, you can always right-click on an object. If I right-click here on the line object, you'll see that it has a little pop-up menu. 
If I right click on the box surrounding the line object, you'll see that it also has a context menu. The very top field is where you can input a name. I'm going to call this line A. My moved line, I'm going to right click on the box and call this line B. So you can see just by adding these two labels, it's much easier for us to understand what object is doing what work in our parametric model. Coming back to our division points, let's take a look at N. N is asking for how many segments we would like to have. If we go back to our params menu, you'll see that we're going to make use of our number slider once again. But this time, we're going to double click and change it to integers. That would be the N icon. We'll call this num segments, short for number of segments. And I'll say there'll be at least one segment and maybe as many as 40. And hit OK. Taking the output of this slider to N, copying and pasting the slider down and bringing it to the other end, you can see that you can change the slider and get more or less points. So a single object can create an instance of itself, typically by interfacing with some other action, like move. An object also has the capacity to create multiple objects. So in this case, a line divided into a series of segments returns many points. What we're really talking about here is a list. A list is a data structure consisting of an ordered set of elements. Coming over here to Rhino, or into Grasshopper, if you remember, we can always drop in from params input a panel. Using that panel, we can always take a look at the output of an object. If you notice, the divide object actually has three outputs. The one we're concerned about by mousing over, you'll see, are the division points. Taking P out into the panel, you'll see that now instead of one simple point, we actually have many points, or multiple points, also known as a list. So here you can see the structure of a list. On the left, an index, designating where that particular object in the list is positioned. On the right, the item, or the entity, contained. In our case, we have points on the right, or point coordinates, and on the left are indices. By selecting this, I can always hit delete to delete the panel. And if we zoom out and look at our definition for a moment, we can start to look at the way in which data flows in Grasshopper. This point all the way to the left is what is referred to as upstream. If you remember, this is the first point that we created in, Grass in Rhino to bring into Grasshopper. If I move this point in Rhino, my Grasshopper model will update. If I select this object and go to Edit Group, that's also Control-G, I can right-click on this rectangle and give it a name. Maybe this is the origin, for instance. That origin point was then translated, moved point, in the y direction by a particular length or distance. From the origin to the translated point, we created a line. We moved the line in the x direction by a certain value of offset. And then we divided each line into a collection 
of points. That collection is referred to as a list. Let's say we'd like to create lines between these two points now. If we go to curve again, primitive, line, you'll see that we can now, instead of just taking one single point as we did here and connecting one single point, you can actually take multiple points and create multiple lines all at once. But if you notice, one of the problems that emerged just then was that we had more points in our collection on the left than we did on the right. And Grasshopper needs some way to know what it is that you're trying to do. And that's referred to as data matching. So data matching occurs when a component has access to different sized inputs. So it's really easy to know what might happen whenever we're creating a line um, between two points, for instance. But what about when you have a collection of many points and many points coming together? So if we take a look right here, can anyone guess what seems to be the problem? One thing to note is that we have two sliders here. Well, the slider on the left is increasing and decreasing, producing fewer, in this case, points than the ones on the right. So the list here has, if we mouse over the output, only 16. Here we have 31. So Grasshopper needs some way to know how to make them connect. There are three algorithms that are currently supported in Grasshopper. Again, these are called data matching. And you can see that the first one, trim end, will take, for instance, the shorter list of points and stop making lines whenever we run out. Repeat last will take the last point in the shorter list and repeat it until the longest list runs out. And the holistic will take and create every connection possible. We go to the tab called Sets. We can see here all the various objects in Grasshopper that allow us to work with data. On the far left, since we're talking about lists right now, you can guess that that's probably the submenu we'd be looking under. At the very bottom, you'll see these objects, the longest list, the shortest list, and the cross-reference. Now, you guys can play around with that later, but one thing to keep in mind is that if you want to have the same number of points coming out of each of these objects, it's really just as simple as sharing the output of one of the sliders. As I delete this slider now and change the value here, we can see that we now have the same number of points in A and B. Great, so I'm going to save this, my third grasshopper file, and close this now. 